Hello everyone, so today I have a theory that I've been working on. I'm just going to open it up right here and sort of explain what I've been thinking. Basically, it's a theory of why if you study chemistry and physics, you'll lead to a place called unbound telesis, or maybe even past that, but it hasn't really been fathomed as far as I know of a place that's further less matter than unbound telesis. You can Google it, you'll find it pretty easily. I've, I was working with one of my friends like while I've been in here and he's telling me about all this cool stuff and then I did some research. I've been studying this for like a while now. Uh, like I've been studying it for a while now and it just sort of led me to um, this theory that I'm about to read for you guys. The void space between nuclei and electrons is what's winning. The void space the wave nature of subatomic particles is what's winning. Biology can suck itself. Biology just teaches minute amounts of superpowers, which is interesting if physics and chemistry are mastered first. Biology is such a middle scale science, it's almost negligible. It fucking takes a long time for everything to be lined up enough to actually study biology. To study biomed or be an MD takes a lot of skill, but ultimately it's a godly subject. It's such a slim chance to actually study properly. Chemistry and physics need to be mastered first. Collectively, we would, collectively would be ideal. So mastering chemistry and physics collectively, all of us knowing all of the chemistry and physics before we start studying biology is ideal. But now I'm just getting an idea like maybe the biology would just cease to exist if we all knew chemistry and physics. But it's, it's like, it's hard to freaking, it's hard to guess that at this point but i'll continue and once you realize what physics and chemistry really are biology stops being important then the next cycle of biological events happens in brackets god creates man again then we fall in consciousness and get distracted easily all over again and if that happens we may experience new important laws but as far as i can see in this realm we're mostly physics biological processes are just physics and chemistry. The thing is, the thing is, the details can be what's distracting us, the actual chemistry and physics. But then we start to philosophize, which is more of a macro study. So a new theory arises. If we neglect the chemistry and physics, we can become gods and such, but are currently in a stage of falling from the heavens. And once everyone gets a good grasp of the big and the small, we can choose which reality is important to us and then study that instead of constantly arguing and forcing people to see a certain perspective over the other. Biology really is what we are because we can devise a means with our intention to explain philosophically that I am not as strong as my weakest link, in brackets, the cell or arguably the electron or any other new subatomic particle. And that I am actually a huge idea even if parts of me die. Something arguably godly. But if you really are seeing that chemistry and physics rule the factual existence, which is what lots of people are leaning into, then unbound telesis could be your final destination. A real death realm where there is only uncollapsed wave potentials and no matter exists. It really is something like a heaven and hell battle, but the catch is either destination is correct. So that means... You could either go to you could go to hell, which would be the unbound telesis where there's no more matter and everything's just basically cold and like it could be warm, we're not really sure. But if there's no matter, typically there's less energy. Only wave particles could mean super cold temperatures, which with no matter to be dense and sort of create heat kind of thing, or even hold heat. Um, and heaven being the ultimate, everyone realizes we're only biological, we're all gods. Um, we don't really have to study anything above our, um, sorry, my lip is bothering me. We don't have to, <laughs> we don't have to study anything above, uh, above what we're able to perceive just with our own, with no tools at all, just what you can see with your own body, with your own brain. That's what you would count as the truth. And like, you don't use microscopes, you don't use telescopes, just just plain whatever you can picture is what you get to use. Continuing, biology leads to being a religious person or a philosophical person 
and worshipping something based on faith, because at that biological scale, a lot of things are mysteries to our mental faculties. In brackets, we kind of just trip on societally agreed upon hallucinations all the time, probably because of DMT in some of our brains, which kind of sucks. And finally, there's the different ideas people that constantly try to bridge the gap between the two worlds, like maybe Buddha states or channeling higher dimensions. Channeling doesn't really hurt. Or carrying the cross like Christ consciousness, which I think is kind of a nuisance. That cross was and sometimes is important, but we kind of got things figured out right now because of physics and chemistry. If this indeed is the same earth from all those years ago. This is a very arguable theory, but it is my new theory. So That basically explains that biology is going to give you superpowers, and if you only trust biology all the time, you'll constantly be a god and if you if you start to if you start to um sorry I feel like I'm losing my face or something if you start to uh if you start to study physics and chemistry you sort of start leaning towards only facts and like science and and instead of having the spiritual belief system you sort of just become I wouldn't say atheistic I would say more like just a little bit more skeptical of what could really be the truth instead of just believing in yourself kind of thing. So if you believe in yourself, you kind of are biological and the second you start questioning too much, you start going to, well, maybe this isn't the truth for me. Maybe the truth is something more complex that we can't really figure out right now. And it's just, it's just one of those things you gotta ask yourself. And that's my theory. Oh, to preface this, or not preface, to edif edifice, what's the one after? The one after. <laughs> Sorry, so basically, as a tail note, I've done some drugs. I've done, like, LSD, I've done MDMA, I've done DMT, I've done salvia, smoked weed, I've done cocaine. I've done, I've drank alcohol. It's about seven maybe eight if I could think of something else I've done. Oh, I've done DXM, which is not really a psychedelic, but magic mushrooms. I don't know if I said magic mushrooms. And with all those drugs, you sort of start thinking about a lot of stuff, right? And, uh, hmm. Yeah, if you guys like the theory, you can share it. Uh, it might be kind of hard to follow. You can always post a comment or just ask a question. There's a lot of forums on the internet that you could learn cool things from and yeah, that's basically it. All right, later. Subscribe.